help with studies, football practice in the fall, and baseball practice in the spring. But he found a way to do it and excel at it. When he left in 1970, the Ohio Valley Conference quarterback held 26 school records for total offense, passing, and punting. Now in 1997, his 69 plays in a game, 59 pass attempts, and 37 pass completions are still the mark others reach for. Vance set those standards in less than ideal weather conditions, but evidently that 1969 Akron snowstorm wasn't that big of a hindrance. He was an all-OVC catcher twice in 1968 and 69. He led the team in triples, home runs, and RBIs in 1967. Upon graduation, Vance played professionally for the Pittsburgh Pirates organization. 1997 Western Athletic Hall of Fame inductee, Johnny Vance. Uh, first of all, Wes alluded to the uh, to the game with Akron. I think it was like 11 degrees when we kicked off, and uh, they were ranked like number two in the nation. And uh, you know, going into the game, I think we were maybe uh, five and three, something like that. So the first play of the game, we uh, we had a fullback named Jim Voorhees, was you know off the good player, and. Uh, Coach Fike sends me out on the field on the first play. We run fullback. We're going to run the fullback off tackle. And uh, so I give the ball to Voorhees. And, you know, he hits it up inside and goes off left tackle. Don't get anything. I mean, it's just, you know, run into a wall. He comes back to the huddle. And his helmet's turned around. He's looking out the ear hole. He said, throw it. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's what we'll do. And we did for 59 times. But that was, uh, you, know, that, you know, I think that game was an exception. You don't run into those very often. Uh, you know, the first thing I like to do is I've got quite a few family members here, and I'm not going to take the time to, uh, you know, name them off, that type thing, but I think we take up about three tables right in the middle of the room there. Uh, my boss, Mr. Cardwell, and his wife, Janet, they're sitting at one table. If, uh, you know, if all you people would stand up and be recognized, I would appreciate it. I think coming to Western was, was probably one of the uh, smarter decisions that I made in my life. And, and uh, I think one of the reasons being uh, was that I had an opportunity to play two sports, which, uh, you know, Coach Fikes told me. You know, if I'd sign, he'd give me an opportunity to play football and baseball, which I obviously got to do. Uh, you know, I think another thing was it was close to home. And, uh, you know, my mom and dad got an opportunity to get to see me play. And, uh, you know, the other thing is I felt like we had good coaches. Uh, you know, I started out uh, my first two years, Coach Dennis was the head coach. And, uh, you know, I really enjoyed playing for him. Uh, coach Fikes was the quarterback coach at that time. Uh, you know, I still shiver to think of all the things I learned from him, you know, as far as coaching quarterbacks and, and uh, trying to be an offensive coordinator. Uh, you know, the things that I learned from him are just, you know, you can't list them all. Uh, the coaches that I played for from high school level, you know, all the way through college, uh, you know, you couldn't ask for a better bunch of coaches. Uh, you know, they put you in a situation to where you had an opportunity to, to succeed. Uh, you know, you had an opportunity to win. You know, you had an opportunity to improve yourself. And, uh, you know, when I started out playing at Glasgow, uh, I was fortunate enough to play for Coach Gilbert. Uh, Sam Clark was one of our assistants. I played for him. Uh, baseball, I played for Tommy Downing, who I felt like was a good coach. And... Uh, you know, went from there, came to Western, and, uh, you know, when I got here, you know, like I said before, I had Coach Dennis as a head coach, and then, of course, Coach Fikes my last two years. Uh, we had Coach Murray, Coach Gilbert, uh, Art Zelesnik, who I thought was a heck of an offensive coordinator, uh, Joe Bugle, who's not doing too bad right now, head coach of the Oakland Raiders. Jerry Glanville, I see him on home box office all the time, so, you know, he's making the big bucks. But, you know, we had a coaching staff. It was like the who's who of coaching. 
And I think that was one reason we were so successful. They were all great recruiters. They were all real great recruiters, and we had good people, good people to play with. And, uh, you know, the talent level, the four years I was here, we were, we were five and five when I was a freshman, and we got better each year. Uh, I think we were like seven, one and one, seven, two and one. Uh, my last year, we dropped a little bit and went six, three and one. And, uh, but, you know, we were, you know, in a situation each year to where we were going to compete, you know, for the OVC championship and, and, you know, obviously for some type of national ranking. And I think that was due to the players that they brought in and for the job that they did coaching them after they got them here. And uh, it was a great experience for me. Uh, Coach Gilbert, uh, you know, if I had a, probably had a second father, uh, you know, in this lifetime, I think it was probably him. And, uh, you know, all the guidance and leadership that, uh, that I got from him, I really appreciate. Some of the people I played with uh, are already in this Hall of Fame. Uh, Dickie Moore, Lawrence Brain, uh, Jay Davis was an outstanding receiver. Uh, the late Jim Voorhees played fullback and was one of the better runners. Romeo Cornell, who's the offensive line coach for the New York Jets. Uh, Walt Heath, who's my boss at Franklin, assistant principal. Bill Haight, who has a son playing for Coach Harbaugh right now. So we had excellent players. Had excellent players, and, and, and uh, you know, I think that, you know, anytime you attain a uh, – you know, some type of, of uh, you know, honor, you know, such as this one today, uh, you know, you've got to look around you and, uh, you know, understand that there were a lot of other good people that helped you get here. And uh, I for sure understand that. Uh, I got one story to tell, and uh, right before I close, and I was telling Coach Fikes before I started, or, you know, before we started today, uh, it's real. You know, fitting that we're playing uh, playing Murray State today. Uh, last football game I played in here was against Murray State. And uh, my senior year, I started out and, and uh, was really expecting a good year. And uh, the first three or four games, I struggled a little bit. I didn't play very well, I didn't think. And, and you know, I think uh, that was probably a reason we got off to a little bit of a slow start. and. I had a little counseling session with Coach Fikes and, and Coach Z and, and uh, kind of turned things around after about the third game. And from that point on, uh, the philosophy, uh, which at that time in 1969 was, you know, I felt like was very unusual, was to throw the football more than you ran it. And uh, they decided that uh, that was our best way to move the football was to put it in the air, and so that's what we did. And we, uh, we were throwing it. You know, we threw the one game, like I was talking about, 59, 60 times. And there were some other games where we threw it 35 and 40 times. Now, you know, days, you know, I mean, you'll see 40 throws, 50 throws in a game all the time. But in 69, I felt like that was unusual. But they did give me an opportunity to do that. And, you know, I thought we were pretty successful at it. Uh, but we playing playing Murray State, getting back to my story, we were playing Murray State the, uh, our last game. We had five seniors my senior year. Uh, they got Romeo Cornell, uh, Johnny Jaggers, who's from uh, Princeton, Kentucky, uh, had a tight end named Billy Rose. Uh, I uh, can't remember who the other one was now. I had them written down here. Uh, and Jim Voorhees. And those were the five seniors. And, and uh, so we go into the game, and, and, and Murray State's got a really good team. They had a big quarterback. It was about 6'5", named Matt Hogg. It was a pretty good player. And he and I and, and uh, Terry Bradshaw were kind of vying for the most passing yards in the nation that year. And uh, so we go into the game, and it's one of those games where, you, you know, everything you try, everything you do is going to work. I mean, you know, we start we start ripping off yardage and putting up points on the board, and I mean, we're just we're just you know we're wearing them out, wearing them out, 
and at the half we're up we're up like 35 six or something like that so we come out the second half same thing just points on the board everything we call works so we're up we're up 54 to 56 to 14 and there's like uh, two minutes to go in the game coach Fikes has already taken all the seniors out kind of one at a time you know so we're all standing over on the sidelines and, and uh, Voorhees, who had been known to do some things he wasn't supposed to do, he, uh, we'd already planned this in the locker room. He said, uh, when it gets down less than a minute and a half, he said, let's go back in. So we're all standing there together. It gets down to about a minute. So we all five take off out on the field and we still got the ball. So I go to split in, I, of course we're all in the huddle. So we break out of the huddle and I go to split in. Voorhees, who's about five, six, he's the quarterback. You just barely see the top of his helmet over the center. Romeo goes to fullback. I think Billy Rose was the halfback. So we snap the ball. Of course, I'm lined up right, I'm like from here to those curtains from Murray's bench. And I mean, they're wearing me out verbally, just, you know, killing. You know, you know, four-letter words just blasting me. You know, I'm going, snap it, snap it, get the thing off here. So they snap the football, and I drive off and run a slant. And I mean, Voorhees puts it right on the numbers for a nine-yard game. Man, we all we're all you know out there high-fiving each other. And so we all start off the field. Man, Coach Fikes, he's standing over, there, and of course he's got that hat pulled down, you know, and got that blazer on. He's standing there. And and of course, he picks me out when I come off the field. I'm the culprit. I'm the guy that started all this. So he jumps me as I start off the field. He said, what are you doing? He said, what are you guys doing back in there? And I mean, he's just, you know, he's just browbeating me to death. And I looked at him. I said, coach, I said, do you realize who we're playing? I said, this is Murray State. He said, hell, get back in there and score again. <laughs> So I feel like 56 to 14 would be a pretty appropriate score for tonight's game. <laughs> In closing, uh, I'd like to thank the committee for uh, naming me to this Hall of Fame. You know, I really do appreciate it. It's uh, something that I've thought about, but not dwelled on, but something that I thought about. And uh, this has been a good day. And I expect it to be a good afternoon and good night. Uh, the only thing that I wish uh, that's missing from today is I wish my mom and dad were here. Thank you.